Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our celebration of the Dio de los Muertos, All Saints Day, which today is in special memory of the members of our community who died on September 11th, and also all of the saints of the gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender community. I'd like to welcome you, and I'd like to begin our service and introduce the Mistress of Ceremonies for the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence in San Francisco, Sister Saki Tumi. Saki will begin our time in prayer. Welcome, and thank you all for coming to be with us tonight. As we gather, I want to share with you all that around the world, people are walking with us tonight. Sisters of... Sorry? We want you to... Oh, okay. Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence are holding similar vigils in Sydney, France, Scotland, England, Philadelphia, Iowa, Seattle, and Los Angeles. MCC churches are praying with us in New York and Toronto and in Sweden. And in Sweden, the Lutheran Church has called for a National Day of Remembrance. In Tennessee and California, British Columbia, and Ontario, radical fairies are gathering in our name. In New York, the Lesbian and Gay Community Services, Services Center has lit candles and Fire Flag, the Union of Lesbian and Gay Firefighters, has called its members to do the same. Across the United States, members of the National Gay Pilots Association and the Gay and Lesbian Associations of American and United Airlines hold us in their hearts. Here in San Francisco, we welcome members of MCC SF, along with their pastor, Reverend Penny Nixon. Um, we also welcome members of SF Fog Reb Rugby Team. We have Paul here. The Golden Gate Flyers, the Franciscan Community, and the Franciscan Theological School. We also recognize the San Francisco Fire and Police Departments who have asked all their officers to remember us tonight. As you light your candles, know the light and love encircle you. Take a moment now, my children, to open your hearts, to clear your minds, and to settle your restless spirit. We chose this evening to gather together because in many traditions, tonight is the night when the veil between the living and the dead is thin. Tonight, in traditions the world over, this is the night we honor all saints, those people who were not recognized because they were perfect or better than you and me, but people who, in the ordinariness of their life, in the complexity of their struggle, in the unfinished story of their unfolding, there was a moment when an incredible light and beauty shined from them, and we were graced to see it. This evening, we gather with their spirits, and after seven weeks of living, watching the All Terror, All the Time Network, tonight we gather in peace and in confidence, knowing that there are things no violence, no fear, and no shame can ever break. Bonds of love and joy and hope. Tonight, as we begin walking through the Castro, we remember these saints actively calling them back among us and gathering with us a powerful cloud of witnesses who encourage us with their spirits and their life force and their energy. Bring them together with you tonight. Let their hearts dance in the flicker of your flame. Catch the beauty of their lives in the corner of your eye and bring them with us in your hearts and in your lives. Let us walk ahead now, calling on this spirit. Let them work with us for peace and for justice and for freedom. Let them lead us now into a world in which all people can be free to be themselves and unfold in beauty and joy. Let us go forth to Most Holy Redeemer where we'll have our first memorial.
will welcome all to Most Holy Redeemer Church. We'd like to welcome Dan Sullivan, who is the Deputy Chief of our Fire Department. Mm. <laughs> who we need this evening. <laughs> Obviously, very much so this evening. Would you please stay close to Sister Constance? <laughs> It's not always easy to believe in yourself, to have faith that you may make a difference, not by being perfect or acting like a hero, but by being who you are. Father Michael Judge had a powerful faith, tempered by years of service that taught him the value of sharing his vulnerability, as well as his strength. Though he could have hidden behind his priestly role, Michael chose to be himself and let his own story inform his work. Thank you, Tim. Let's hope they have safe passage. As a gay man, he helped the Franciscans organize one of the first programs for people with HIV and AIDS in Manhattan. Later, when the church expelled Dignity, a gay Catholic group from church property, Michael let them meet in the Franciscan church and raised $100,000 to help fight their legal battles. After gays were banned from marching in the St. Patrick's Day Parade, Michael, a good Irishman, marched in the alternative gay parade in Queens. He was easy to spot in his long, brown friar's habit. Michael hid nothing from those he served. He had faith that shared his own struggles would help lift up others. A recovering alcoholic himself, he reached out to others with addictions, including many gay priests. As chaplain to New York's firemen, Michael shared his humor and affection and gave them a safe place to share their deepest fears and joys. Michael died on September 11th while ministering to a fallen fireman. At his funeral, a Franciscan colleague hinted at the unique touch Michael brought to his life by saying, when he got the call to go to Ground Zero, I know he had his hairspray tucked in his pocket. He would have wanted to look his best for his boys. Tonight, let us remember Michael, whose faith had the power to move mountains because it moved so many hearts. May all those who seek to live a life of service find the same faith to do so with honesty and integrity. Please raise your candles. Walking with Michael, we raise the light of our faith and we say, we all remember, we all celebrate, we live on. Let us move together to our next station at the Eureka Valley Community Center. So many things can tear a family apart, but only one thing is essential to bring it together. Daniel Brandhorst and Ron Ronald Gamboa understood that. For 10 years, these two men forged a love so deep and rich that they felt they were called to share it as a family. So they adopted three-year-old David, and they made him their son. David was the center of their family, and they raised him in the heart of Los Angeles's gay and lesbian community. When their friends began thinking about having children of their own, Daniel and Ron were there through the Pop Luck Club and the countless personal talks and visits. They were a loving family and their love was infectious. When their plane, 
American Airlines Flight 175 crashed into the World Trade Center. Daniel, Ron, and David were returning from a family holiday in Cape Cod. Tonight we remember Daniel, Ron, and David and the family that they built on love. They are members of our family now, and they remain with us as we continue to fight for the rights of all of our families. Walking with Daniel, with Ron, and with David, we raise the light of our family and we say, we remember, we, remember, we, we celebrate, celebrate, we live, we live on. on. And we carry on now to the corner of 18th and Castro. traditional church there's no back pew to hide in. <laughs> it was on this spot shortly after September 11th that the gay and lesbian community made its first moment publicly in honoring Mark Bingham and presented us with an opportunity to know more of our own story. I've had the pleasure of speaking with a number of people who knew Mark and one thing is clear, Mark was a man who was hard to miss. At six feet five and 220 pounds, he was a formidable spirit. He had a lion's heart, full of love, full of joy. He was a natural leader. He was also a man who had struggled, a lion's struggle, to come to terms with his own identity and then to meet life and live life on his own terms not as a stereotype, not as a hero, but as Mark Bingham. Mark was the president of this fraternity. He was the coach of San Francisco's gay rugby team, SF Fog. He was for a long time the loving partner of Paul Holmes and a faithful son. And recently he began his own public relations business in San Francisco and in New York. Mark was a man with the courage to live his dreams, honestly, with an open heart. If one thing became clear about Mark's life, it was that no one left his presence not feeling welcomed, not feeling loved, not feeling affirmed for who they really were. Tonight, as we gather together on this spot, we celebrate that Mark gives our community the memory that we are a courageous people. Because every day when we rise and meet the world, we choose to meet it on our own terms, with our real faces and open hearts. Tonight, on this place that has become hallowed ground, we lift our candles and walking with Mark, we lift up our lion-like hearts and roar our courage into the world as we say that we remember, we celebrate, and we live on. Thank you, Mark. Now let us go together to a different light bookstore. Carol Fleisig, who was a determined and hopeful woman. She worked as an ER nurse with Nancy Walsh for six months before anything between them happened. But she knew that what she wanted and hope sparks, she hoped sparks would fly sooner or later. Things did heat up 
and Carol and Nancy began a romance that lasted for 13 years. This September, with Nancy's kids grown, the two were enjoying the quiet of their New Jersey home, looking forward to having time to get more involved in the community. Carol had joined the Human Rights Campaign and hoped to give her talent and time so that others could share her happiness. We're here also to honor Pamela Boyce, who was a determined woman who hoped life would always hold another challenge. The VP of an accounting firm in the World Trade Center, Pamela lived in Brooklyn with her partner of six and a half years, Catherine Angelo. Pamela had just finished an associate's degree and was eager to start on a bachelor's and then a master's. Even with a full plate, Pamela still found time for her other passion, disco. <laughs> That's a passion <laughs> with a calling. According to Catherine, Pamela always went to bed hoping the next day would be even better than the last. Tonight, we remember Carol and Pamela and celebrate all those who live and work in hope that tomorrow will be a better day for all of us. Walking with Carol and Pamela, we raise the light of our hope and we say, we remember, we, remember, we, we celebrate, celebrate, we live on. on. Let us move together. Charlebois understood that romance very well. As a pilot, he relished flying across the world, traveling to the places he loved best, and spending time with friends. David was in love with life, and flying let him live that love expansively. His love of life led David to engage things passionately. He had a fierce love for France, a country he considered his second home. He refurbished an old house in DuPont Circle and made it a welcoming home for himself and his partner of 14 years, sorry, Tom Hay. His love spanned the generation gap and led him to volunteer with the Sexual Minority Youth Assistance League in Washington. The love he received from his colleagues helped him overcome the homophobia within the airline industry, and David became an active member of the National Gay Pilots Association and an advocate for domestic partner benefits in the industry. On September 11th, David was first officer on American Airlines Flight 77, which crashed into the Pentagon. Jeffrey Coleman, a flight attendant for American Airlines, also loved life and showered his affection on friends and family. He was always doing special things for those he loved. On September 11th, he took an early flight to get home to Nevada and spend the weekend with his lover of 10 years, Keith Berdowski. Jeffrey planned a surprise Keith with a trip to Italy in October. For both David and Jeffrey, life was a passionate love affair, one they lived exuberantly. Let us celebrate their love and affirm the passionate, vibrant love burning in each of our hearts. Walking with David and Jeffrey, we raise the light of our love and we say, We remember, we celebrate, we live on. Come really close together for this one. <laughs> 
Joe Ferguson was a little red-headed boy from a small town in Mississippi. <laughs> a small town where Palat people didn't discuss homosexuality. But Joe was a determined man who left his hometown after studying at Duke, joining the Gay and Lesbian Union there, and moving to Washington, D.C., where he found what was for him the perfect job, being the head of the National Geographic Society's education outreach program to children. Joe was a teacher who understood that the geography of the world was a map filled with joy and wonder. And it was his passion to take young hearts and make them burn with life. Joe was on the flight that crashed into the Pentagon, where he was with three children that he was taking out to the Channel Islands here in California for a month-long field trip. He was a little red-headed boy filled with joy. Michael Lepore worked in the World Trade Center as an analyst. He had lived for 10 years with his partner in Yonkers, where they had lovingly restored a brownstone and created what was by all accounts the most lavish garden in New York. Every weekend, Michael had at least six members of his Italian family gathered around with spades and digging hoes and buds and flowers. He and his partner made their garden a neighborhood retreat where young and old could rest, tell stories, swap tales, and share the joy of what it meant to live in a neighborhood. After Michael died, his partner had said that the neighbors continued to weed the garden and trim the ivy and plant the flowers that would bloom in spring because they hoped that Michael would come back. And now that we know Michael won't return, all the more reason that we celebrate the joy blooming in our world because of him. Bob Fangman was an irascible little son from a family in Chelsea, Massachusetts. The youngest of his brother and sisters, he learned early to speak his mind, to tell a good joke, to get to the front of the line. He was terribly excited last November when he finally became a flight attendant because all he wanted to do was meet people, make them happy, move them along. Bob was in the plane that crashed into the first World Trade Center tower. And his colleagues tell me that it would have been clear when things went wrong that he would have been with the passengers, holding their hands, telling them stories to take their minds off of things, asking them about their children and their families and what brought them life and joy. Bob holds our hands today as we walk through this darkened world. And Graham Berkeley, according to his friend, the writer Andrew Sullivan, was an irascible English brat who was proud of his beautiful body, the full Maori tribal tattoo that ran across his chest, and was passionate about dancing, and opera, and music, and life. Last July 4th, he met his boyfriend during a tea dance in Provincetown. And his boyfriend said that he felt like he was the luckiest man in the world to find such a beautiful partner. A true romantic, Graham was in love with the idea of freedom. And after 10 long years of struggling, on September 1st, he had finally gotten his green card to stay in the United States. Graham reminds us of the pure joy to be had in our pleasure and our desire and our wonder. And he is with us tonight in the heart of our Castro sometimes a tired old lady, but always willing to dance if you take her hand. And tonight I'd like to call on Penny because as we started our service, we learned of another member of our community who passed away. 
I lift up Renee Barrett, who was in the World Trade Center and escaped with three degree burns, but has been in a coma. And her partner, Anise, and uh, Renee passed away. And <clears throat> a lot of things going on with the family. They had adopted children. Uh, they were active in the MCC Church in New York and a loving couple. And I lift them up tonight as well. So tonight, my children, here in the shadow of Harvey Milk, one of our greatest saints, we lift up our light. And with Joe and Michael, Bob and Graham and Renee, we celebrate our joy as we say we remember, and we, we celebrate, celebrate, and we, we live, live on. on. And now, my children, look around you. Look at the flag above us. Look at the traffic and the people. And know you are in many ways in the heart of our shared gay and lesbian, bisexual, bisexual, transgendered, and utterly fabulous universe. And know that many people have walked here before you. Many proud people. Many joyful people. Many faithful and loving and hope-filled and courageous brothers and sisters. And as we said at the beginning of this evening, Tonight is a time when the veil between the living and the dead is the thinnest. And tonight, in whispers that turn to roars, those friends gather with us. I ask you just to take a moment now and remember those people who have been saints in your own life. When you felt that you could never be happy and they counseled you. When you didn't know who you were and thought the world would reject you, and they reached out to you in love. When you had your first fabulous date or experienced your first primal orgasm and they were there to giggle and laugh and give you pointers on how to do it better the next time. <laughs> All of those people, my children, are with us tonight. And from the bottom of your hearts, I invite you now, remember them. Bring them together and let us lift a cloud of witnesses here with Harvey Milk. And as you feel comfortable, shout out their names and bring them back among us. Taco. Run. Three. Sister Lushen. Sushi. My mother. Sandy Neck. saints, and for all of those saints whose stories remain unknown to us, for those saints we have to discover by reading between the lines of the obituaries in the New York Times. For those saints we have to find looking out of the corner of our eye as we walk down the street because their heads are bowed. Those people are with us too tonight, my children. And we are here together. And as a last act of this celebration of all saints, I ask you to look at the person next to you. Be not afraid to look into their eyes deeply and see the power resting in that soul to change the universe. See the joy in their hearts waiting to flourish. See the love that conquers fear and the courage that braves every struggle. And my children now embrace the saint next to you and let them touch the saint within you. And let us share a very special life with you. I'm going to embrace you because they won't fall. we come together, touch one another, be together, enjoy it. 
If you make an interesting connection tonight, don't be afraid to keep hugging me. <laughs> Take your candle with you and hug somebody that you haven't seen yet. Either. <laughs> because the joy is infectious. And that's what today reminds us of. And so one more time, let us raise our light, my children. Because we do remember and we do celebrate and we will live on lusciously. <laughs> Living well is the best revenge. Living well is the best everything. <laughs> and so tonight, thank you on behalf of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence and all who gathered with us this evening. As our last act this evening, we're going to take these icons and leave them with vigil candles at different places in our community as touchstones so that they may be seen and felt through the rest of the weekend. And for those of you who are interested, the sisters on our website have put up a virtual prayer wall. If you want to share the story of a special saint in your life, if you want to express your feelings or your grief, your anger, your hope after living in the all terror, all the time world of the last few weeks, if you simply want to connect and sign your name so that others know you're here, please visit our site at www.thesisters.org. You'll find a link to our prayer wall there. And if you're interested in supporting the victims of the gay and lesbian community who perished on September 11, we've also listed links on our site for those organizations working specifically for the members of our community the Lesbian and Gay Services Center of New York, Fire Flag, the Gay and Lesbian Police and Fire Unions, and SAGE and a number of other organizations who are making sure that aid gets to those in need. And so my children, our work is done, but our living is just beginning. So blessed be, blessed be, hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. amen and all, all women. women. <laughs> and uh, everything that goes bump in the night. Be peaceful and joyful, my children, and go and celebrate that you are truly beautiful and truly filled with joy and truly gifts and saints for each one of us. Thank you.